Ladies and gentlemen, he has returned. Who? Jesus? No. Better. Welcome back to Rambo Mania and on tonight's show, a brand new Q&A with my best Rambo buddy, Mr. Brent Whiteside. Now, Brent, uh, Brent, man, wow, he's... He submitted some really cool stuff for tonight's uh, tonight's broadcast. Um, the B side being um, this fabulous, fabulous, fabulous Q and A that I got to do with Brent uh, for the Rambo Maniathon. Unfortunately, the Rambo Maniathon is going to be pushed back um, until we can kind of schedule everything right and get everything done. Because I, I I've been pretty much just like running around like crazy. Um, so, you know, more on that in the future. It will happen probably after our three weeks of Rambo 3. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. But the A-side to, to tonight's um, awesome, awesome, awesome Q&A with uh, Brent Whiteside. The A-side is this alternate Rambo First Blood Part 2 synopsis a what if of sorts um it's food for thought you know food for thought and um you know it's just awesome it's just awesome i, I really love this brent uh posted this on my on my facebook page and it's just so freaking cool um an alternate look at you know what could have been if things in the sequel didn't go as planned so here we go alternate Rambo First Blood Part 2 Food for Thought by Brent Whiteside and this photo I love this photo of Brent it's my it's one of my favorites Brent looking very in the moment looking very uh how do I say fixated in on the moment you know food for thought so this pic kind of goes with this little little synopsis that he sent uh down to us here at Rambo Mania and uh while I'm at it, shout out to Brent Whiteside, man. I'm hope I hope you're having a good a good day. I hope you had a really good Halloween and uh, a great cruise, because Brent went on vacation. So, Brent, this one's for you, buddy. Look at that arm. Look at that arm, Brent. Man, yeah. And also, I want to thank Brent because Brent always like really is is like really cool. Like comes on and like. Leaves, leaves me some really awesome comments, really makes me think, you know, on um, different things I post on the Facebook and on the YouTube, and and it, it's just, wow, it's just like working, getting the opportunity to do things like this with Brent. I always look forward to it so very much, just because um, Brent's the real deal, man. Brent, uh, you know, Brent knows knows where he's what he's talking about and where he's going with his subjects, and that's one of the, you know, the great things about being a great writer. So, you know, you might want to go check out some of Brent's, uh, Brent's scripts. I, I don't know if uh, he's got them online yet for free share, but, you know, maybe you leave him a message on the Facebook or on uh, Barks2988 on his, uh, his, uh, his uh, YouTube, and, you know, maybe, uh, maybe he'll, he'll give you something to read. But it's always, 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 Awesome and a pleasure above pleasures to uh, to get it on with Brent. So, man, I just I just love that photo. Just lost in thought, getting through, getting through another day, getting through the madness. I love you, man. I love you. I love you. One day we're gonna have that microphone conversation. I can't wait. I can't wait to like to see you on Skype or something and be able to, like you know fool around, and be like, hey man, how's it going? Great, great, great stuff. I love you, guy. I love you. I love you so much. So the alternate Rambo First Blood Part 2 goes a little something like this. Rambo goes back to Vietnam with his camera, doesn't come across any POWs, but takes a bunch of random shots of the scenery, then gets picked up at the rendezvous spot by Troutman. Erickson, the Karate Kid bad guy, and Lifer, the coke machine aviator glasses dude in the chopper. 
Back at the Hangar HQ headquarters, Rambo solemnly goes up to Murdoch, hands him the camera and film back and says, Sir, I couldn't find any POWs, but I got some great shots of the, of the river waterfall, some bamboo and some larger than life Buddhas that were there. I hope it was worth all the trouble. Murdoch pats Rambo on the shoulder and replies, That's fine, Rambo. We'll develop the film and get back to you if any of it is good enough to go in any nature magazines. You did really good, son. Troutman said you were, the, said you were one of the best three military photographers the computer system picked out. Go see Troutman, and he'll get the paperwork for your official pardon worked out. Rambo nods and says, Sir, I hope you find him someday. Murdoch says, We will. Then Rambo turns to leave, and Frank Stallone's Peace in Our Life plays out in the opening credits. Ah, uh, closing credits. Sorry. In the closing credits. Amazing. I love this. So, thank you, Brent, for this awesome piece of nostalgia and food for thought. Now, the piece de resistance, we're going to get into the Q&A with Brent Whiteside. So question number one. Any thoughts on the effect Rambo First Blood Part 2 had on the world during its time of release in the 80s and the aftershock effect of the Rambo Mania phenomenon movement? Brent answers, I think that, for one, it served in a way to heal some of the lingering wounds left over from the Vietnam War in the minds of many Americans, at least in a way. Yes, the movie was fiction and fantasy, but, but I'm sure it still satisf satisfied sorry, many to see the movie played out like I did, with Rambo going back there and devastating the army by himself and getting some of the POWs back against all odds and despite his own government turning its back on him in the process. I know that President Reagan was an instant fan of the movie and the character, and of course it had a tremendous impact on the action movie genre and war movies in general. I would also venture to guess that it probably inspired a lot of young men to sign up with the military and fight for their country. Well, I agree with you, Brent. I agree with you there. You know, like, personally seeing that movie as a kid, it just it just made me want to, like, you know, to, to join up in a, in a lot of ways. Um, later on in life, I did actually try to uh, join the military, but uh, I didn't have enough school credits to do so. And then uh, going back to school, um, you know, to try and get those credits, and then with the unfortunate events of 9-11, um, it just kind of made me not want to be a part of everything like that, if I can say that correctly. It kind of just, it just kind of felt too close to home at that point. And not that, you know, but I was sure, like, if I went over there, I would have died. And I guess, um, you know, it just, it, it kind of made me change my mind about a lot of things, especially looking back at it now. Um, I'm kind of glad that I didn't end up joining the military. So, question number two. Um, actually, um, oh, hold on a second here. I lost my, uh, I lost my mark where I was here. Um, and I, and I do agree with you, you know, it did have a lot of, uh, a lot of pull with the action genre and the war movies. In general, you know, a lot of that one-man army kind of thing, I believe, stemmed from this. And Rambo really did become a household name. Like you said, right down to President Reagan, you know, he was an instant fan of this movie. And countless times, countless, countless, countless times, has brought it up, you know, um, over his course of reign in the presidency, and even beyond, you know, uh, like that whole Rambo is a Republican kind of thing. So... Question number two, how do you feel about the current gear up of Rambo 5 and how do you think the film will turn out upon its release film wise and audience wise? So Brent goes on to write, to answer, sorry. Um, 
I've been looking for Rambo. Uh, I've been looking forward to Rambo Five ever since the day that the last film came out. Um, that the theater in in the theater in 2008. I'm excited to see what Sly has in store with us, in store for us, with this film and how in the world he will possibly top the last one. I expect even more violence and bloodshed, if that's even possible. I expect that this film will do well financially and that it will be a big hit with the audiences. Although I also expect the movie critics to be harsh because it seems like many of them don't like or prefer straightforward action movies. But then I never care for what the critics say or think. Anyway, I just hope that this time there will be a way somehow to prevent kids from paying for a PG or PG-13 rated movie and then sneaking into Rambo 5 instead because that really hurt Rambo 4 at the box office and ratings by making its competition at the time look better in the numbers than it should have been. I totally, totally, totally agree. And, you know, I, I think that's that's one of the, the many fights that Sly has has going against um, him with these kind of things. And you know, it's like even when with Expendables 3 deciding to go the route of PG-13, um, I didn't have a big problem with that because I actually really did like the movie. And I think that the R-rated cut when it's released is going to be even better. But, um, you know, we should feel lucky that we got an Expendables 3 and we got to see everybody in Expendables 3, you know, because they're all getting up there, right? And, you know, we could not have had an Expendables 3. So I don't know why everyone's got a hate on that movie, um, per se. But, um, yeah, you know, like, it, it just, it just sucks, you know, like, they'll, they'll, someone will always find a way to get around the gusto and either leak the film or sneak in, uh, pay for one movie ticket and then sneak in to see the other movie. You know, but I really hope that when Rambo 5 does come out, it gets, uh, it gets a hard R and it gets, uh, like like Raphael was saying, I hope we see Rambo go out in a in, in the in the way he's supposed to. So, you know, I'm with you on that. I can't wait to see I can't wait to see Rambo five. I think Last Blood's gonna be, you know, over the top spectacular. It just sucks that they, you know, had to delay it until January.